The next thing we're going to look at is a standard digital multimeter. And what this thing can do is it can measure both the electric current or the amount of charge flowing through a circuit as a function of time and also the electric potential, AKA voltage. Let's look at the potential first because that's typically the easiest for students to understand. So in order to make this thing measure electric potentials for me, I need to do two things. First of all, this black wire should always be connected to the middle post on there that says COM, C for common. And so we're always going to plug this black wire into the common port right there. Most of the time, the red wire will be clipped into the right-hand post where you see a V, V for voltage at the top. The next thing we need to do is set this thing to the proper setting. This little dial here can be turned to a bunch of different settings. Off is straight up and down. Um, if you'll notice, there are V measurements going around to the left and V measurements going around to the right. The ones going to the right have a little um, tilde mark next to them, which indicates alternating or changing current. That's not what we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with constant or direct current. Those would be the readings over here on the left. The different settings represent the different maximum voltages that the voltmeter can read. And so the bottom one is 200 millivolts, 2000 millivolts or 2 volts, 20 volts, 200 volts or 600 volts. Since I've got a 1.5 volt battery, to deal with the 200 excuse me 2000 millivolt range would be acceptable anything above two volts though it would not register and i'll show you what that looks like so i'm gonna go ahead and set that to the 2000 millivolt setting for right now and you'll notice right now it reads zero um, these cool ones have a nice little backlight to them i think that's easier to see right now so i'll go ahead and turn that on and then I simply put the two prongs on the wires that are attached to the other end there across whatever I want to measure the voltage up. So for example, if I bring in my battery, take it out of the meter right there. If I put this across either end of the battery, one on that side, one on that side, Get good contact. You'll notice it reads 1560 millivolts. So remember that it's on the millivolt setting. So I got to just remember to convert that to volts. So 1500 millivolts would be the equivalent of 1.5 volts, which is what the battery says it should be. It's a little bit more than 1.5 volts because this is a brand new battery. Like I literally took these out of the box just a few minutes ago. Um, if I were to connect these two batteries back together again, let's zoom back out, let's bring my circuit board in again here, connect these guys like this, let's turn that around. So if I were to take my voltmeter and put it across that system, I'm going to get OL, which stands for overload. What that means is that the current setting that I'm on of 2000 millivolts um, doesn't read voltages that are that high. And so I'm going to click this to the 20 volt setting, which is typically what we use in class because um, we deal with voltages between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to about 18 or so. Um, and this is going to give me volts now. You'll notice that the decimal point's over here. So I'm going to get, you know, to the nearest tenth of, or hundredth of a volt, rather. So now when I put those probes across there, now it reads about 10 volts. The negative sign means that I've got the probe switched around. So if I switch my probes around, now it's reading 3.10, 3.1 Volts. So these are brand new batteries, so they're a little bit more than 1.5 volts. So when we use this, if we want to actually get the correct sign for everything, we want to have the red end on the positive side of whatever it is we're measuring and the black end on the negative side. If I reverse them, that's okay. I just get a negative number instead of a positive number. Um, if you're a linesman or something like that, knowing the polarity of what you're working with is a little bit more important than it is for high school physics. Hence the negative sign if you've got your probes switched around backwards.
Okay, so if I just put this across that system of batteries, I get 3.1 volts. When I then connect my light bulb, if I then measure across my light bulb in the same way, get that squared up a little bit. These wires are stiff, so it's pulling my probes. So you'll notice that the voltage drop across my light bulb is a little bit less than three. And so there's a couple reasons for that that we're going to discuss later. One is that some voltage is also lost across our wires, like here and here. The other is that as current is pulled from the battery, the voltage of the battery actually drops. And so that's something that we're going to study in physics too, specifically how the current causes battery voltages to drop just a little bit. And so most of the labs that we do, we actually use battery emulators to prevent that from happening. So the voltage drop across my batteries is 2.6 and across my light bulb, about the same, and about 2.3. There's a little bit of voltage drop across each wire. So notice that when I put the voltmeter just across two wire or one wire that I get not a zero reading, but a really, really small reading. Same thing over here. Just a little bit of a potential difference across my wires. You'll notice this one's a little bit bigger. Uh, if I put it here, eh, about, eh, about half a tenth of a volt, put it here. So I do lose a little bit of potential difference as the charges move through a wire, but I lose most of it across my giant resistive light bulb right here. So that's our voltmeter. Um, if I switch it up to 200, just for funsies, it'll, it'll still read it, but it won't give me as many significant figures. It will give me 2.5 as opposed to 2.46 like it was before. And so that will be for higher voltages like using um, household electrical outlets and things like that. The, the difference between these different settings is there's simply different fuses in the back of this thing and different fuses will cause it to overload or trip at different high, or, um, higher and higher voltages, but it'll also result in more and more error. So in general, you want to use the lowest setting that'll still give you good readings for whatever it is you're doing. When we draw a voltmeter in a circuit, we simply draw a circle, like kind of kind of think of like an old timey um, analog meter with whatever we're measuring in. So in this case, volts would be V, um, and so that's how I represent a voltmeter. So to draw this circuit, I'm again going to draw my batteries, and I'm not too worried about the polarity again. Draw my resistor, light bulb, and then I would draw my voltmeter across one prong on one side, one prong on the other side, the resistor just like this. There's my voltmeter. So there's no need to like do anything fancy with how long the wires are, which one is which, it doesn't really matter. We just show that current is going to also go a little bit this direction into the voltmeter and then back around to the circuit. Let's investigate how we use this to measure electric current. So the electric current settings are over here on the right side. And you'll notice that again, there's a couple different settings. There's 2000 microamps, 20 milliamps, and then 200 milliamps. So that's 0.2 amperes. The ampere is a very large unit of electric current. And so most of our currents are going to be in the milliampere region. And so most of the time, we'll simply set that to that setting right there. On that setting, I can leave the red post connected right where it is right now. And so you'll notice above that, that it's also got an ohm symbol for measuring resistance directly with these settings. And it's also got a milliampere setting. And so that's why these three settings are delineated differently than this setting. If I use that setting, I've got to move the red wire over here instead. So let's just start with that and see if we can measure currents just with that, with that setting. All right, so I'm gonna move this over here again. 
In order to measure the current going through an electric circuit, I actually have to disconnect the circuit because the current can only be measured if all the current is going through the meter. So to measure current, the first step is to break your circuit. Your second step is then to reconnect your circuit using the wires from the meter. And so I left this gap in my circuit. I'm simply going to fill it in with the wires from my meter. And then hopefully we can get a reading. And I'm not getting any reading, so I'm guessing I'm going to need to switch this to the next highest setting. So when I switch it to the next highest setting, the 10 amp setting, I need to move the red wire from the right side to the left side. Let's see if we get a light bulb again here. There we go. And so now my light bulb is lit up again and notice that the current is reading 0.36 amperes, which is greater than 200 milliamperes. The benefit to this setting is it gives me the current directly in amperes. And I don't have to convert it from milli amperes. So as bright as that light bulb is, it's only 0.35 amperes of current moving through it. And again, an ampere is a coulomb per second, coulomb per second. Um, to draw this, I'm simply going to do the same thing I did for the voltmeter. Use a, I didn't leave myself any room here. Let's erase this. Let's neaten this up. So to draw the ammeter in my circuit diagram, I'm going to do the same thing as the voltmeter. Just draw a circle, kind of like indicating a dial, and put an A in it, A for amperes. So to draw the circuit that I did here with the ammeter connected, I need to show my battery. then my light bulb and then the ammeter is connected so that what goes through the light bulb also goes through the ammeter just like that and then complete the circuit so notice that i don't really need to draw the fact that the wires running from the battery to the ammeter um, like go down or around or they're long or they're twisted or they're red or they're black or anything like that. All I need to show is that the current that goes from the battery goes through the resistor and through the ammeter without any splits or anything like that. We're going to call them junctions here in just a second. Notice also that my ammeter is to the left of my light bulb, but on my circuit diagram, I drew it to the right of my light bulb. And so I would get the same thing regardless of where the ammeter was actually connected. And so when I draw my circuit diagram, the only thing that's important is I show what the current's doing. Here I'm showing current goes through both the resistor and the ammeter, and it doesn't really matter which comes first or second. Just like I showed you when I switched the batteries around, the polarity doesn't matter. There's no specialness in the order of which circuit elements are in an electric circuit in most situations. Typically what we do in class is we use alligator clips. So these guys right here are called alligator clips. Chomp, 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 chomp. And we would clip alligator clips to the little prongs of the multimeters so that we could kind of permanently connect the multimeters without having to connect the red one there. And then reconnect it without having to constantly hold those things in place. So by using alligator clips, that makes the wires longer, but so what? I don't draw it any differently. I can now keep my ammeter in place. If I wanted to, I could put two meters in the circuit. So if I wanted to also include a voltmeter, I could, and I would draw it just like we did before, where it looks something like that. And so in class, we typically will take several meters as we're doing a lab. We'll set one up for current, 
we'll set a second one up for voltage so that we can do those measurements simultaneously. So in the next segment, I'm going to show you um, how the voltage and current relate to each other as we start changing the current through our circuit.